and Lex Sokolin, Global Director for FinTech Strategy, Autonomous Research, Tim Draper, the founder of Draper Spirit USA, and Pascal Gauthier, the president of Ledger France. Hi, everybody. I hope so. You I can't take credit for being the founder of Draper Esprit. You know that? No, Simon so we're gonna Cook have to change is. It, yeah. But uh, sorry about but that. But I created the Draper Venture Network, so we're good. Anyway, I need to be honest. Sorry, about a little that. bit of okay. technical issues here. Good. No uh, problem. Let's get it going. Um, today we are here, and I hope you are as excited as I am to talk about uh, cryptocurrencies and ICOs which uh, went mainstream last year. It has become a great way actually to uh, fund startups. And today with our three speakers, we're gonna be discussing uh, how it's evolving, how that market is evolving, and what it means for you, uh, the general audience, to uh, potentially invest in that kind of uh, ICOs. So uh, we're gonna get going soon. Uh, first, I'm gonna ask one of these gentlemen, what exactly is an ICO? Could you refresh our minds and exactly tell us what it is? Sure thing. Um, thanks for having me, I'm Lex. Um, most of my time I spend looking at FinTech and researching crypto and, and these developments, so um, I'm gonna to try to condense a, a long rabbit hole of information into two sentences. So ICOs, or token offerings, are a digital version of an asset that a company owns. So when you buy a stock, you're buying something from a, the capital structure of the company. You're buying a portion of the company. You have a legal claim on what the company does, like revenues or its business activity. With an ICO, what you're buying is a token which represents something that the, the company offers to you. Whether that's an asset in a video game, or whether that's a little bit of processing power, or whether that's uh, a really awesome cartoon cat. Uh, you can really tokenize any number of these assets and then mutualize them to your users. And that can be data, it can be electricity, anything that you can think of. So I guess part of the definition is that it's not a stock, right? You're, you're not buying, at least with most ICOs, a piece of the company at the top level. You're buying part of its economic activity, broadly defined. And then the second piece of it that's, I think, really important is that it's a digital asset. So in the way that Bitcoin is a digital asset, Bitcoin's a coin, um, but it's scarce, it's, it's like a commodity, right? There's a limited number of them, you can own them, you can transfer them, in the same way a token is a digital asset. So if you have it, nobody else can have it, you can't copy paste it. So when you combine those two things together, it's super interesting, very new, highly speculative, you lose all your money, but you'll have a lot of fun. Thanks. Um, before we switch to the second question, may I remind you that we're going to be uh, taking questions. So you can actually use the app, the VivaTech app, log in and uh, look for the startup stage and you can ask your question. We're going to be taking some of them at the end of uh, that talk. Uh, yeah, don't hesitate. It's slidedo.com also. You can log in there. Uh, next question, how would you compare uh, ICOs with, let's say, traditional VC fundings? What, what's the trend here? Yeah. Okay, so uh, we were discussing this with Lex. Hello everyone, I'm Pascal Gauthier. I'm from Ledger. At Ledger, we secure crypto assets and we are known for uh, a little key that we do that's called Ledger Nano S that helps you secure your crypto asset and your private keys. Um, so buy one from us. And uh, so- Actually, let's, a let's ask them. How many of you have a Ledger? Are using a Ledger? Okay. That's pretty good. Yeah, the rest of you, should try it. It's unbelievable, this feeling that you get when you plug in and you take money and you hold it in your hand, you realize that you don't need a bank anymore. It's awesome. So, uh, by the way, it's, I mean, you all should do this. It costs you $75, buy a ledger, plug it in, and download some cryptocurrency or another, 
and then pull it out and realize that you don't need a bank. It's really cool. Okay, and sorry, I didn't mean that to interrupt. Time, no, yeah. that's great, Tim. And by the way, full disclosure, Tim is one of our beloved investors, okay? So, um, okay, so uh, ICOs, new market, it scaled big, a lot of news around it. So I was thinking, you know, how does it compare to VC funding, for example? And so maybe a few numbers uh, just to frame it. And I had uh, Lex to uh, verify the numbers before disclosing them here on stage. Uh, seven billion last year, and depending on how you look at it, seven billion in the first four months of this year. Uh, now, if you look at uh, the details, and that compares to 46 billion for VC funding just in Q4, and roughly 150 billions in VC funding in any given year. Uh, so it's going fast, but it's still relatively small compared to VC funding. Now, if you look at the first quarter, it starts to be meaningful and compared to VC funding, but few things uh, we need to look at. If you look at granularly what's happening, you can see that there's some trend of ICOs that is actually following the price of the coins, uh, because what you can see is uh, if you're rich in coins and you have a lot of value, uh, uh, what are you gonna do with your coins? So you probably invest in ICOs. And so if you look at the, the money that the ICOs raised in the past six months, they, you know, there's a trend that follows sort of the price of the coin if you exclude ICOs like EOS or Telegram. So it's big, it's growing fast, but you need to look into the detail to understand how it really works and how to compare it to VC funding. Mr. Draper, you invested in a lot of ICOs, I'm presuming, last year. What would be the advice you'd be giving to a newbie in that market? So um, the way I look at these ICOs is um, they are, um, it's great because they're what I've been looking for to try to transform the venture capital business. It's, um, it's you know, we've been providing bad service at a high cost for a long time. And it's about time we took on, uh, th there was somebody who came and disintermediated us. Um, but with that, what I look for in an ICO is pretty much what I look for in any entrepreneur. Do they have that drive and that passion and that determination to become successful? And will they focus on this coin for the rest of their days? And that's what I'm really trying to find and an ICO is a movement. You know, people think it's just a way of raising money. You need to create a movement. You need to create something that, where after the ICO, there's a market for your coin. There's a reason for that coin to be out there and to exist. And you've got to understand that it, um, the value of that coin that you create is the square of the number of nodes in your network. It is Metcalf's law. So as Bitcoin continues, to, as people add more Bitcoin wallets, the value of Bitcoin continues up. Same thing's true with all these ICOs. As you find your marketplace, the value goes up. So Telegram's ICO comes out. They've already got a built-in network because there are a lot of people that were listening to Telegram. You've got to create that kind of a network. So the two things. One, you've got to create a, a marketplace for what, you, what it is you're selling. So somebody's got to care about your coin and want to buy it in the, in the future, after the ICO. And the second is, you are creating a movement, and it's got to be a movement like for a sociological transformation, okay? It's got to be something that really matters to people. You know, I've seen ones that are like, like uh, for ecology, and that's like a movement, or, or for women. women. There should be a women coin. I don't know what, what are you guys doing? Get a women coin out there. It will spread like crazy. Anyway, think about it that way. Build a network and uh, you'll have an ICO, a successful, not a successful ICO necessarily, but a, a successful coin, which is your real end goal. So I, I just want to disagree on anything with you just for fun. 
Um, so yeah. I'm just going to make it. something yeah, up. Bring it on. Um, you know, I'm very bullish on tokens and coins, and I think it's spectacular. Um, but one practice that you should watch out for, and I feel like these koala bears giving me a lot of credibility right now, really helping me make my point. Um, so one of the things, imagine you have a restaurant, right? except it's in virtual reality. So we have a virtual reality restaurant on Decentraland, and we're going to tokenize our restaurant and do an ICO. Okay, what are you going to tokenize? Well, we'll tokenize our tables. We have 10 tables, we'll tokenize the tables, and you can buy a table token, you get a portion of the revenue of the table, and every year we burn a table so it's worth more. O okay. Or we're going to tokenize a coupon for the revenue of the restaurant. So if you want to eat here, 25% off if you use our token and anyone you refer in, 25% off for them and then you get paid out, right? Or we tokenize the, the forks or the food or the, the wallpaper. And if you look at today's token landscape, this is how schizophrenic it is. The things that people are tokenizing as their asset Right? The examples I gave, I gave are real examples of Binance and other companies. Um, when you apply them to what a company we understand does, kind of make no sense. So what, what I worry about is the, the token design actually aligning with the story that a woman coin or a restaurant coin actually sells because just to tell the story is not enough. Yeah, okay, that's interesting. Um, I, think you've, I think you're right, because I think that um, there is a marketplace already for that restaurant, and the restaurant wants people to come, and they, so they, they create a token for you know, being there, going there a lot or whatever it is. There is a market for that, but that coin, unless we're talking about McDonald's that co or Starbucks, that coin is probably not going to spread the way it needs to to make it worth it for any of us to collect them. So I think it. I think you've got to think in terms of. A, sure, you need a marketplace for it. So if it's a woman coin, they're going to have to figure out what's the market for it. But I think a woman coin could be as gen, as generic as Bitcoin. I think it could be. Yeah, notice my tie, Bitcoin tie. Just thought I'd everybody. Okay. Um, so I think that that's right. You're going to um, create something. So I'm saying I'm looking for the ones that are generic because I, I don't want to play around with just like a restaurant's, uh, you know, the, the t 10 coupon thing. I don't think that's going to do it. So you know, it'll be great for the restaurant, but it's not going to be any. Yeah, for me. So I think you're both right. Uh, and it's a terrible disagreement. <laughs> terrible disagreement because you're both right. I think the confusion, there's a lot of confusion in the ICO market in the sense that what Tim is describing is what ICOs were previously made for and you know, thriving for big projects that are changing the world and that become protocols and platforms for developers to join and build uh, communities and, and, and products such as the Ethereum platform, for example. And what you're describing is what is ICOs are becoming. So there are various kind of ICOs, which is just a way of raising money for your restaurants. Uh, and I've been approached several times recently by various entrepreneurs that you just use the mean of ICO just to raise capital to fund a project that could have funded otherwise. Um, and I think this is why you're hearing the debate, which is there are many forms of ICOs. And today it's about uh, user manual and like, do you invest or not on ICOs? And it always comes down to any, any kind of form of investment. It's like, be very careful when you invest into an ICO because it's been turned into this magical world word uh, that means that raising a lot of money very quickly and without making any sense. And so I think for some project like the Ethereum project, it was very valid and definitely brought a great platform to the world. Uh, on other projects, it's less valid and it's just a scammy way of raising money. Uh, just a, a thought, which is uh, something, a number that I found somewhere, maybe on your website, but it's 10% uh, uh, of all coins, ICO coins, have already be, been stolen. So also, also what you need to keep in mind is ICO is a form of token, it's a form of digital money. You still need to protect your private keys.
And all, all ICOs, almost all ICOs, are able to be stored on a ledger. There we go. Um, let's move on. Uh, what can we learn from uh, Telegram recent ICO? What does it tell us? What can we learn from that? Well, I mentioned Telegram earlier. I think it, um, it, it was able to raise an extraordinary amount of money. And the reason it was, was it had a built-in network. Yeah. And so there, and, and they figured out sort of a model where they could, um, they could actually, there was a marketplace for that token. Uh, and I think th they hit on the things that I suggested. Um, now, you know, is, is, did they raise too much money for where they are or whatever? Yeah, maybe. But, uh, but if they're very creative, they can put that money to work and make something really cool happen with it. So, um, and I never, um, I never feel like a company raises too much money. I think uh, if you raise too much money, you, I, I know that companies who raise too much money often spend too much money, hire too many people, build out too fast, but, uh, but raising too, I always encourage my companies, raise as much as you can, just don't spend it, because you will always want that war chest. So I'll, I'll take the opposite, I'll do it. Um, so I, th I think we have three things to learn from Telegram. The first is um, the move into pre-sale, right? So this year, Telegram's got two billion out of seven billion-ish in the time frame. So that's a big chunk of uh, token funding, and it's all private pre-sale, right? Uh, have any of you participated in uh, the private pre-sale of Telegram? This guy, okay. Um, but for most people, you know, you, you don't have access, and that's different from last year, so that's number one. Number two is the investors that are in the pre-sale are not Bitcoin whales, they are really smart traditional venture capitalists. So it's the second wave of institutional investors um, that's coming in, and it's a different type of capital, which means the space is more mature. Are we touching here the limit of the ICO movement? Because now it's basically limited to people who are already rich, who can actually invest in this kind of ICOs. Well, I think there's the other five billion, right? So th there is the other end of the argument. So Telegram's opposite in the world is EOS. And they've raised three or four billion, and it's all crowdfunded from South Korea, um, from small checks across the population. So I, I think it's... Um, it is getting splintered, though, for, for projects in this way. Um, and then I think the, the third thing from Telegram is um, it's storytelling is just really important. You know, um, from an external point of view, to me, it's the story of here's everything Ethereum did. Here's their ton t top 10 apps. We will build it and deploy it to our users. Um, and so to me, it just showed how powerful the storytelling can be. So me being in the middle, I would say that on, on Telegram, I think it's a great topic where you can see that you can look at it from very different angles. Uh, and then time will tell, uh, because as we looked at the white paper, the Telegram white paper, uh, even internally at Ledger and from people that are more technical than me, we have to say that we didn't really get what they were trying to achieve. And so we're still in the expectative on, of understanding the big vision of Telegram behind this ICO and why they need so much money uh, to do whatever they're going to do because it's still unclear to us. Uh, and so therefore, you know, bringing me always back to the same point, the phenomenon of ICO is very young and is yet to be seen how it's being going to be regulated, et cetera, et cetera. And you should expect a lot of uh, blood in this market in a sense that it's very unlikely that uh, all of them will be uh, successful. And it's more likely that just like in a normal venture world, that 90% of the companies will fail and only 10% would do okay, and on the 10%, maybe one, two, or three will actually do great. So you should expect, ICO is nothing magical. You should expect the same things that you experience in a normal investment world. And so you just have to bet on, the, on those that would be very successful. Uh, now let's talk a bit about the dark side of ICOs, uh, scams. 
how can we avoid them? How could you, well, well, prevent them from happening? What's, what's the best advice you could give to our audience today? Yeah, and, and what's interesting here is that, that you're saying that there's a, a very direct line between you know, the ones that are good and the ones that are bad. Usually the people who start these and build these, I, these coins, they have good intentions. Maybe they don't dedicate themselves to it enough. So if you're out there, if all of you are thinking, hey, I want to go buy some coins, make sure that the people behind the coins are really dedicated to what they're doing. And make sure that it's not just like, you're not just sort of jumping in because George over there bought some, or Sam, or Melissa. I, you want to you wanna really use your own brain. And don't go thinking, oh, the government's going to protect me from this. I mean, you got to use your own brain. I, I, I hate this when they, everybody thinks that they've got to be protected by the government. The government has their own, their, they're thinking about themselves. They're not thinking about you, they're thinking about themselves. So make sure that you're not, um, you know, go out there, think for yourself, go buy the coin that you think is going to be really interesting and going to grow a good community and and has really good people behind it where you feel like, wow, they're really great. And, you know, you could argue that Telegram's a scam. You could argue that any of these are a scam. Who knows what's going to happen? You when, you, when you buy a coin, you're buying a piece of, you're buying like a Kickstarter for societal change. You're buying a, like this thing that will change society. You want it going in that direction and hopefully the people who are driving the coin and creating the coin are also thinking that way. When everybody says, well, oh, what about regulation? Why do we let regulation be this like huge dark cloud over our heads? It, it ruins creativity, it ruins imaginations to have these people just saying, I don't know what the rules are gonna be, but I know I can come get you later you know that it's just dangerous it's bad for society and we slow down progress so let's you know let's uh, stop asking about okay. regulation no, they no don't regulation. know what they're doing no and they're yeah. getting yeah. too heavy-handed and it's heavy-handed without telling us what the rules are malta malta i just met with the prime minister of malta that guy has decided we're going to create very clear rules Okay. So Tim, if you want to start Tim, an ICO, do it out, there. We're running out of time. So sorry to interrupt, but yeah. Uh, Alex? Well, it's my time, too. I know. I know. <laughs> <laughs> no, we're going to be taking questions. And actually, we have uh, some polling for you. Uh, I would like you to log into the VivaTech app. Uh, we're going to do a small polling. That should be up soon. Well, it's a simple question, I just, basically. I just want to agree with Tim before <laughs> it's over. Really? That, uh, yes. Now? So the thing to watch out for, well, two points. One is um, the memes and electricity. So a lot of crypto is memes, right? From Dogecoin to literal memes that you trade. But that's always been the case. That's a human brain at work. It's always been that we trade ideas. And then the second is electricity, right? So some things are fundamental and change how things work, what we build things on, right? So Bitcoin is like introducing electricity or the internet. So when you're looking at these things, figure out which of these is real. And then on the meme side, um, today we live in a world with propaganda bots, right? And when you're launching an ICO, it's trivial to buy a, a, basically an army of information manufacturers that will tell you this thing's the best that will pump up your Twitter, that will fill up your Telegram. So you have to be very thoughtful to pull apart whether the information is real or not. And I would just say one okay, thing. Okay, so, so so far our questions are no, I don't no, yeah, know. You did, you did yes a good job actually. No. You convinced them actually. See? That's the result. So, so just one thing. So they are real scams. So be careful because they are real scams. Not everyone is a thoughtful entrepreneur, and there are people that are using the buzzwords to build real scams and actually steal money from you. 
Uh, and that happens not ju just because it's ICO, just because in the world of finance and money, when you have a buzzword, usually people use it to, uh, to, to scam you. And when your cousin is coming to see you to say that he's going to do a great ICO, run away from him uh, because uh, he's going to do that soon. And that tells you that maybe the market is overheating a little bit. And so uh, if, you don't have, if you have a lot of money to invest, make mistakes. If you have small money to invest, there are other vehicles today that are probably safer for you. Voilà. OK, uh, I guess we answered most of the main questions. We're going to go for the last one. Is the ICO market going to crash? How do you get your money back? Oh, yeah. So it is going to crash. It is crashing right now. Uh, and uh, we predict that there will be a few winners and a few great ICOs and a lot of uh, stories where you have dead walking ICOs, so meaning ICOs that are not doing much, but have raised so much money that it can go on forever. And also uh, terrible stories where you'll never see your money again. So we believe that it's going to be a market with very few winners. I actually think that we are going to see uh, more concentration in coins. It'll, I think it's going to go very much the way the internet did, where it internet went up, it came down. They called that the bubble, but it wasn't really a bubble. It was like a, a small wave before a huge wave. But the huge wave is going to come, and it's going to be a little more concentrated. But if you don't know which ones are out there, maybe you want to do a uh, in, to buy a, a bunch of them so that you're you're there when the really big ones happen. I, my guess is that the big I mean, Bitcoin will be there. Ethereum will be there. Probably Bitcoin Cash will be there. And then there will be some other winners who are really cool technologically or who are making, who are looking at things in a new way. And they become, you know, the equivalent of the Googles and the Amazons and the Facebooks of the world. Life is risk. Don't be afraid of risk. Take it. Don't take more risk than you can afford. Thank you. Well, that'll be it for us. Thank you for your attention. And, uh